What's going on my broskies? My name is Totski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we're here to break down the brand new 8.5 anniversary Sugo Fest featuring Kinemon Denjiro, uh, Ashura Doji and Dogstorm. We're gonna have to figure out a better name for that character to uh, make it a bit easier to say but this is uh, the 8.5 anniversary part one so that would lead us to believe that there's gonna be a part two Sugo Fest celebratory event in the near future so a lot of people are probably gonna you know maybe save their rainbow gems to see what's happening there but i mean this character is just absurd if you guys saw the breakdown video talking about his abilities specifically his final tap this character is looking to be very very spicy but uh, obviously we have the free multiple we actually get a free one time 10 plus one rare recruit pull on this banner which is great um it doesn't really tell us at the moment uh what type of characters we can receive in terms of whether this free multi is also going to be um like a higher percent chance to get a red um, i wonder actually what the percentage chance will be to get a legend in this sugo fest i wonder if it's going to be 15 percent like a maybe like a super sugo fest level even though it's not a super sugo fest um speaking of super sugo fest though the waifus are back Hancock, Nami, and Robin are returning, as we can see on part one, which is great. Of course, at news time, we're probably going to get a bit more information in regards to uh, who's going to be boosted on what banner, and I will probably make a separate video talking about which part of the banner will be the best one to actually pull on, but let's actually talk about this banner. We can see that it starts on October 29th for part one. We've got part two the day after on the 30th, and then part three on the 31st. Now, the rate-boosted characters do appear to change with each part as we can see that when we switch over to part two you've got cad viper and the kawamatsu and then switching to part three you have the okiku and the riso so we'll have to wait and see uh, what they're actually doing in regards to that but let's have a look at the steps here because the steps are pretty intriguing the first multi being nothing special but the second multi 85 percent chance for a sugo fest exclusive i suppose it's for the 8.5 anniversary but 85% chance for a legend? I mean, to be honest, there probably should have just been a guaranteed legend, but 85% is better than the base rate as it is now, right? So, it is what it is. The third multi, though, is, is kind of interesting. Guaranteeing you one of the new rare recruits, Cad Viper, Kawamatsu, Kiku, or Raizo. The fourth is a legend, and then it will basically cycle throughout. The eighth multi is a very key one, being a limited pool. The twelfth being a super limited pool on part one. And then you got another super limited on the 15th. The 20th is another super limited pool. And then the, the 25th is another super limited pool legend. But that is for part one. And part one does not guarantee you this brand new character. So that would probably lead us to believe that this new Sugo Fest exclusive is probably going to have a, a really low rate on part one. Kind of like what they do in the past. But then on part two, when we cycle all the way to the end, which is the 30th multi, it says that you're guaranteed to get a new Sugo Fest exclusive and i'm pretty sure the reason why it is titled this way is just because kinemon and denjiro and you know the name is too long so it probably doesn't even fit on the panel so i think that's probably why they listed just new sugo fest exclusive but i'm pretty sure it guarantees you on the 30 but it doesn't specifically say it so i guess we'll have to wait and see the banner information uh in in regards to what that would actually be but the steps uh, are relatively similar uh, except that this time on parts uh parts two and three the new rare recruit is guaranteed on the fourth multi instead, which I kind of don't like. It would have been nice if uh, if they made it the same, but look, it is what it is. Not much we can do about that, but the steps uh, are, are a lot more harsh on parts two and three, but I think they do that because Kinemon, Denjiro, etc. are going to have a higher rate on parts two and three, so we'll have to wait and see how that goes. But of course, with Hancock, Nami, and Robin making a return on this Sugo Fest, that is fantastic for anyone that didn't get the chance to pull them during the anniversary celebration because this unit is fantastic they have a great crewmate ability set they have a fantastic special and a usable captain as well and they're very good in pirate rumble too very very solid unit in rumble but I guess with all that being said, let's actually talk about Kinemon Denjiro and the rest of the rare recruits because we haven't actually done that yet. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about with Kinemon Denjiro and Doji and Dogstorm is the fact that they actually have GP stats. So I would have made a video right before this talking about um, the brand new update with 12.2 and GP and how that actually works. So this character does have GP skills. So we can see that this character is going to provide boosts to strength, defense, 
uh, level 3, and then attack and health level 6. That is a phenomenal leader skill. And then you got Psy characters getting attack and HP 5, guard percent 6, and then slashes will get HP 3, attack recovery 5. I think this probably is going to be one of the best uh, GP leader skills in the game right now because you can build a really good strength team with this guy and uh, also this guy's very good for slashes. But then you've got, you know, the, the Psy builds as well so you can build like really OP Psy teams. Um, I, I like this a lot. I think that there's a, there's a lot to like about this unit. Now, the GP burst after dealing 30 damage, uh, after dealing damage 30 times, which is... Probably not too difficult, actually, um, And but the thing is, is you can only use his GP burst one time, so you really have to pick and choose where you use it, but it targets one enemy with high defense, ignoring their defense for 2.5 times damage times the base leader attack, but then it says, if you have Kozuki Odin on the team, targets the team for 50% CT reduction, so ideally what you want to do is, is save it for when you have Kozuki Odin on the team, and ideally if you have the strength Odin and the Psy Odin, you can build like a really good Psy free spirit team uh, on one side uh, as, as one of your teams and you can have like the strength odin on another team and you can use it on two different teams that's probably the best way forward for building with this guy because if we just have a look at his regular Pyrumble stats, he gives really good buffs to slashes. And, I mean, the, the special itself is fine. Um, he's probably not the most OP character in the game. But slashes have some really strong units like Roger and Whitebeard, Strength Odin, obviously, Doflamingo Kizaru. You can build some pretty solid teams with it. Even like Legend Cracker, for example, who's going to be a really nice addition for the CT increase as well. So, that is the breakdown of Kinemon Dendro. If you want to see the, uh, the more abilities and the breakdown of the actual abilities in the final tab, go check out my other video. But... We also have the brand new Cat Viper, who is a strength slasher powerhouse, and his special reduces barriers by two, threshold by five, but then if you have five or more slashes, he gives your strength and slasher characters a 2.25 orb boost for two turns, and if you already have an orb boost, he's going to give a plus 800 base attack boost to strength and slasher for two turns. So... You can obviously straight away that, you know, you want to be building with slashes with this guy. And the fact that he gives you a really solid orb boost from a generic rare recruit is actually really nice. And I like I also like the like the fact that he also provides a, the orb boost to a color as well as the uh, as well as the as well as the class. So I like that too. But the utility itself, removing two turns of barriers and five turns of threshold, that alone is already really good. And he's probably gonna see play probably just due to that alone. And then his crewmate ability says that if you tap on him with a tandem or a one slot, he applies a 10% slasher resistance down to all enemies for one turn, which can obviously stack with the captain ability of Kinemon Denjiro, which can give a further 10%. So yeah, you can see that there's really nice overlap between this character and the brand new legend. And then his support effect attaching to essentially all of the characters you would expect him to attach to. He says that if you use a special to boost attack, he gives slasher characters an orb boost, 1.75 for one turn. So that is already very good. That is a very good support effect that is definitely going to see play. It only does provide the orb boost to slashers, but at the end of the day, it's still a very good support effect. So I think Cat Viper is actually very solid. But then we've got Kawamatsu here, who is also a strength slasher, but he is also free spirit. And he provides minus one cooldown, Bind and Despair removal by 5 turns, and remember he's a slasher so you can have the Whitey Bay support to remove an additional 2 turns of Bind and Despair. And then if you have 5 or more slashes, you get a 2.25 attack boost to slasher and strength characters for 2 turns. And if you already have an attack boost, you get a 2 times color affinity to slasher and strength characters for 2 turns. So again, like attack boost or you can get a color affinity and pretty solid utility. He also resists two turns of special reverse. He does have hunger, which is actually very good for a potential ability. I would expect him to receive fear resistance in the future with a limit break expansion. So we hope for that. And then his support effect attaches to the characters you would expect. And once again, kind of the opposite of Cat Viper being if you use an orb boosting special, you get a slasher attack boost 1.75 for one turn. So overall, Kawamatsu and Cat Viper, they seem pretty solid. And then we've got Kiku Nojo, who is also a strength slasher free spirit, and it will make dex and quick slots matching for three turns for your strength and slasher characters, reducing five turns of damage reduction, which is the rainbow shield. And then he also, or she also, sets all enemies defense to zero for two turns, but then if you have five or more slashes, you get a 1.0 chain boost for two turns and a 1.75 defense down conditional for two turns. So this is pretty solid here. The fact you can get a very good chain boost and a defense down conditional, rainbow shield removal, 
and beneficial slots for three turns, which, which you can use in a utility sense for getting around enemy, inflicting you with, you know, negative uh, beneficial effects. So I, I think this is actually a very solid um, special ability. Probably not my favorite though. Uh, it, it is still requiring you to use those slashes, of course. So, you know, these characters are a little niche, just built that way. So it is kind of interesting that the characters are built in such a way, but considering that, you know, Kinemon Denjiro are literally built around slashes in general, it makes sense why the characters are built in such a way however the okiku has this really cool crewmate ability to reduce one turn of paralysis as well for the crew um, yeah so that's for the whole team so that's also a really unique effect that not too many characters have in their crewmate abilities to inflict it for the whole crew so that's very very good and then her support effect will go ahead and state that if you use the special, reducing all enemies' defense by 80% for one turn. Unfortunately, 80% reduction supports are not really that useful, unless if you're just trying to get a conditional out of it through activating another special. Uh, I'm not really the biggest fan of this, but I guess there could be niche ways you could use it potentially on like a mini boss of a Kizuna. If they have like increased defense, potentially reducing it by 80% will give you enough uh, damage to break through that without actually having to use a defense down remover. So, I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's kind of mid, to be honest, but um, this unit's pretty good overall. It's still a pretty solid unit. And then the last character is Rizo. So, Rizo is a strength slasher shooter. I don't know how he's a slasher, to be honest. It doesn't really make a lot of sense, potentially because of his shurikens, maybe. That would maybe be why he's a slasher, but either way, he has barrier penetration and he's a shooter. So, that already, you know, piques interest with Ben Beckman and Lucky Roo, right? Um, so, his special is going to reduce special bind by five defense up by five, delaying all enemies by one, and also ignites enemies for two turns and locks your crew slots for one turn. I, I like that because he's essentially all utility type of effects. Special bind, defense up, delay, ignite, and orb lock. Like, all of that is pretty good. Um, I really can't see much wrong with this. I think that Ryzo is very, very solid. Also reducing Special Bind by 5. And I would assume he gets Fear redu Reduction with a Limit Break expansion in the future. Unfortunately, his support effect is pretty bad because it reduces Special Bind on your supported character by 3 turns when you're inflicted with it. So you have to really wait in order to, you know, use it on a character that gets a Special Bind removal effect. But then... It only removes special bind on that one character, so it's a bit of a weird support, unless if special bind is only inflicted on a very select few amount of characters on the crew. It's kind of weird though. There aren't too many cases where supports like that are very, very useful. But that's the that's it. That's the breakdown of the batch. If we go over to the event island real quick, there is actually a, a quick little breakdown of the Kaido event. Unfortunately, we can't actually read what the Kaido does. But this is essentially our new turtle farming event for the month of uh, on, of the month of November moving forward. So uh, we don't know what this Kaido does. Um, apparently he is a driven powerhouse. He is not a slasher. So I don't really know what this character will be aiming to actually do. But I'm really excited to see what he could potentially hold. And hopefully he has some cool synergies with other characters in the game. But I think with all of that, that's, uh, that's pretty much all that we have today in terms of the brand new batch and the brand new rare recruits. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm definitely going to be pulling for the Kinemon, Denjiro, Ashura Doji, and Dogstorm character. I think they're very, very solid. I'm very excited to get them and use them in content and specifically get that final tap as well, which is essentially a nerfed Luffy crew, right? But I think with all that being said, that's going to wrap it up for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.